Hi, I'm Kate Shimarani, natural nurse in a toxic world, co-founder of the British Nursing Alliance and health advisor and nurse on Sons of Liberty Radio USA. You can catch that live on Rumble and many other platforms that you'll find on our Telegram page, British Nursing Alliance, at 1pm on Saturdays. Jeremy Hunt has just announced as Chancellor that he's going to allow social services and the government to take 100,000 from our elderly's assets when they go into the hospitals and the social care settings. Why is that significant? Well, anyone who's been watching any of my recent interviews, both with Majid Nawaz, Charlie Ward, I've also just done one with Sasha Stone, where I've talked about the protocol NG191, which has been replacing the NG163. This is the end of life pathway, which they are putting the elderly and disabled on in the hospitals. And that pathway involved morphine and midazolam with NG163. And now it is remdesivir, benzodiazepines and opioids, which is lorazepam as well. And our country has just ordered huge amounts of lorazepam. And it may interest you to know that in February 2020, the shares for lorazepam in one month went up by 34%. So they knew worldwide that this was going to be used. Now, they are putting more and more people on this end of life pathway. And you can go and look up the palliative care funding review. And that palliative care funding review tells you that they're going to be increasing the palliative care. And it also gives you on one of those pages on that palliative care funding review, which is page 64, it tells you the amount that the deaths of the elderly is going to go up by 2031, which is when their plan goes up too. Now, we had the planned, well, we have the planned tariff incentivized euthanasia point system in this country. And at this moment, 1,642.5 patients must be euthanized in England alone every day. And that includes disabled children in order for hospitals to get their money. And this is also extended in the care homes. If they go below that target, they lose money. If they go above that target, they gain money. How do they euthanize, which is illegal, they hasten death and they hasten death by using protocol NG191. It's actually a guideline. And NG191 is remdesivir, benzodiazepines and opioids. And who is being put on that? The elderly and the disabled. And they're using algorithms. So if you have comorbidities, which it states on page 64 of the palliative care funding and what it actually states is that the changing demographic with the aging population with chronic diseases and trajectories and greater comorbidities provide further incentives to improve and expand palliative care provision provide further incentives that's money to expand palliative that's increase the amount of people they're going to kill using ng191 and it also tells you with the expected number of deaths by age between 2011 and 2031 is expected to rise in the 65 plus. It's expected to rise from 370,814 to 40, 448,507 by 2031 minimum. And if they just ordered all that lorazepam, and we know that they gave our elderly five times the, about, the amount of um, the midazolam, five times the amount they should have had during that first three months of lockdown. Um, it's all there. The cull is coming. The big, big cull. The one they talk about with the war rooms and gearing up because they're going to have COVID and flu, even though they've just injected everybody with, with the COVID booster, the flu shot, the shingle shot and the pneumonia shot. Yes, some elderly in the care homes have just received all of that, their fifth booster as well. Doctors in private uh, clinics 
who work in the NHS are seeing all of these injected with all of the things wrong with them. One doctor earning 9,000 a day in the private setting doing 10 minute consultations with people suffering from the consequences of the COVID shots. So they're making sure that they're, they're gearing up to, to cause a massive pandemic with all of these different things. And our elderly are getting all these shots all at once and they're all gonna get sick and they're gonna be put on this end of life pathway. So one last thing, who is gonna be doing this? The nurses and the doctors. If we look through history at any times, going right back to the 1700s, when you had any times where you had austerity, economic downturn, euthanasia has been practiced. And um, a lot of these people that are involved in it are also uh, people that are involved in eugenics. And uh, I just would like to add at this stage that the Medazolam came from Healthcare Limited, or called Healthcare Limited, and that went on to Supply Chain Coordination Limited, which Matt Hancock set up the company, and he bought millions of shares with taxpayers' money, and he was the sole shareholder. And that company supplied 52% of the drugs into the NHS. And it may surprise you to know that Matt Hancock is also the main shareholder in Genomics England Limited. And Genomics England Limited, he stated in 2019 in an interview with the World Economic Forum that he was going to get the map, the genomes for 5 million UK people. How would he get that? Would it be through a swab up the nose? I'm just saying. And you're all watching him and sending stupid videos and voting for him while he's laughing at you on I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, whatever it's called. I don't know, I don't have a TV. Um, they're gearing up for a big cull and they're all involved and they're using the protocol NG191. And you nurses and doctors out there, if you're hastening a death, that's euthanasia, it's illegal in this country. So it's you that's doing it. And history teaches us that when they start to look for who to blame, it's going to stop at your door because you're ultimately the one that did it when you should have said no. And you could have said no. You could have also said, I'm not going to do that. Um, or that's going to kill the patient or that's too much. But you didn't. You did it to keep your jobs. So who to blame is going to be sitting at your door. Anyway, I've said it all. And I hope you share this far and wide and it makes sense. Have a good day.